In today's video, what we want to talk about is the kind of rookie budget travel mistakes that a lot of people make, and I know we made them. We made it. We've yeah. made a lot of mistakes along the way. We're two and a half years in now, and I think we've got everything figured out. Probably, <laughs> Probably not. not. But these are suggestions mm. that you need to be aware of. Yeah. So the first one, which we right out the gate thought, we can cut corners on accommodations. We can cut back. We don't need much. We're going to be traveling the world. We won't care where we're staying. And not that we didn't look for really nice places, but we didn't, I don't know, there were certain things that we were like, oh, yeah. we don't need that. We look for uh, nice places within our budget. Mm -hmm. Now that is important, but could we have expanded that budget a little bit even at the time? I think we could have. We probably could have. I know that right out the gate, you're nervous because of your budget, but that is one of those areas that we have personally found. We would rather cut corners in other areas and have the accommodation because when we stay in a place for a month at a time, we spend a good 80% of our time in our accommodation. Well, you know, in 80%, 70%, 60%, whatever it is, your accommodations are important. Mm -hmm. Now we can cut in other areas. Yes. You know, we don't like to, but we can if we have to. Uh, beer would be a good place where we could cut back a little bit and get a patio, for example. There you go. Something that we feel is very important. Yeah, outdoor space definitely has gone up on our list for sure. Okay, overpacking is another one. Mm -hmm. We overpacked, we've overpacked a couple times. I think we still, I, I don't know, actually, I think we pretty well yeah. got that one dialed in. I didn't overpack this time. But I have the previous times. Each time I pack less, don't pack things that you don't need. And you're going to find that there's a lot of things that you won't need. I packed a lot of camera gear. Mm -hmm. And I've sold all that camera gear since. And I just, I, I have a little GoPro. I have a little microphone. And that's all I need yeah. for our YouTube channel. Now, there are other things that I cut also. T-shirts, shorts, um, sweatshirts, things like that. Mm -hmm. I've cut them all out. I still carry a sweatshirt, mm -hmm. a pair of pants, but that's it. Yeah, one of the things that you quickly realize is that you are going to have a lot of clothing because you think, I'm gonna need all this variation of clothing. Now, when you arrive somewhere, and we have heard this from so many different people, there are going to be your favorite items that you wear over and over and over again. This is the yeah. same thing, think about when you're at home. You have your go-to comfortable clothes that you wear when you get home. That's gonna be the same thing when you're traveling. So just really keep that narrowed down. The areas this is gonna save you, it's going to save you on checking a bag. Now, you might run into a time that your carry-on bag, you have to check it. But let me tell you, over the years, had we been checking a bag every single time, right. it would have cost us hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yeah, now we do get that comment a lot. You know, is your carry-on bag overweight? Yes, it is. Do they weigh us every time? No, they don't. So all those times they don't, we have saved money over and over and over again. Those bags have paid for themselves three or four times over. They with definitely have already. So so don't worry about your bag being overweight. Mm -hmm. Worry about lugging things around and taking too much of what you don't need. Underestimating your expenses. Now this is an area that is very easy to do. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your costs very much in line and what they are actually going to cost you when you arrive somewhere. You want to just do that research beforehand. Yeah, it can ruin a vacation. It mm -hmm. really can. You get somewhere, you've got it all planned out. You think it's going to cost X amount of dollars. Well, you didn't count on bus transportation, train transportation, or even maybe that excursion that you knew nothing about that you really want to do. Mm -hmm and it costs you another 40, 50, 60 dollars to do that. Those things can add up in a quick hurry and uh, we've experienced a little bit of that along the way. Yeah, so veer more on the side of having those extras in there because if you budget a little bit higher than what it ends up costing right. you, that doesn't hurt you at all. If you budget way too low, you're gonna end your travels way too early. Yeah, I, I actually do it to this day. I budget out what I think I'm gonna spend next month mm -hmm. and I add 250 300 dollars mm -hmm. depending on where we're at just to play it safe and you know uh, I've never gone over budget mm -hmm. so make sure you're doing your research before you get there wherever it may be that you're going is there plenty to do is there a lot of activity right. are there free things to do are there uh, things that excursions that you might want to go on add all those things up and make sure you stay within budget. Right, and the other thing that you wanna look at is 
not only what it costs you to get to a location and what it's going to cost you to stay in that location, what is it going to cost you to exit that location? Now, we've had a lot of questions from people asking us how we plan our travels. Now, we don't just plan our next destination of where we're going. That would be still not very easy. It takes a right. lot of time, but it would be a lot easier. We have to plan an exit plan as well, because what if you get yourself, say, to the island of Crete, because that is an upcoming plan for us, but exiting off of Crete to fly maybe to the next area we need to get to is right. very expensive. Right. I have great ideas. And I throw them at Carrie all the time, mm -hmm. and then she starts plugging and playing, and she says, no, Brian, that's actually a bad idea. I'm the killer because of great it's gonna, ideas, apparently. Yeah, she kills all my great <laughs> ideas because it's going to cost an arm and a leg to get from that place that I suggested to the place that we need to go to. So we do have to um, maybe do a little bit of our own research to get to that place within our budget. Right. So just make sure and do all that research so that you know going in there's not going to be any surprises. Now there is one question that we get all the time. And that's what do we use for bank cards. Make sure you have an ATM card that does not charge you ATM fees. There are plenty out there to be had. ATM fees can really add up. Some of them are upwards towards $8 uh, each time you use it. Some you don't pay any at all. But if you have that ATM card that does not charge you ATM fees worldwide, then you don't have to worry about it. Right, and we both have two different ATM cards that have that, um, and it's really nice. One of mine, it does have a limit of how many you can do per month. I never reach that because we're very cautious of how much we take right. out each month, but it is always really nice. That's the other suggestion we'd probably make and we've made in the past, carry two ATM cards, but especially if you're leaving for an extended period of time. Um, there has been a situation where Brian had his card eaten by the machine. Fortunately, we got it back. User error. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we did get it back. Uh, but in those situations, you would really be in a tough situation having to uh, figure out how to get money otherwise. Now, the other area that you want to be very careful of and make sure that you have a credit card that has no foreign transaction fees on on it. That is a mistake that I've heard a lot of people make. They get to another country and all of a sudden they're being hit with these these foreign transaction fees and I, I don't know what the percentage is. I think it's like 3% or something. Well, that can really add up because we use our credit card for most everything. Uh, you want it right. for the points, you know, just your regular stuff. Um, and we try not to carry a ton of cash Well, there's us. nothing like paying for a vacation when you get back home when you all have all these credit card fees that stacked mm -hmm. up on you, that's not fun at all. So make sure you do your due diligence on which credit card you're using. Right, and there's plenty of out there to choose from. Traveling without medical insurance. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that, you know, I probably would have just done because I don't know, I'm a guy and I'm going on vacation or I'm going on a long-term um, extended stay somewhere, I'll be fine. But uh, Carrie over here convinced me, no, you need to have insurance. She was right. I've got Cigna Global World Insurance, which if you've watched this mm -hmm. channel, you already know. There's also safety wings if you don't have insurance at home, mm -hmm. or if you do have coverage at home, you can add the safety wings on top of it. Right, and so, you know, with safety wing, the advantage is for, you know, we hear commonly, especially from say young people or people that are like, oh, well, you guys are healthy. Do you really need insurance? Right. Sure, we all think we're healthy, and all of a sudden tomorrow we find out something uh, bad, uh, or we there's an accident, you or step whatever. Step off a curb and break your ankle. Right, whatever it is, you know. In reality, care outside of the states is less expensive, but there is still never any guarantee of what level of care you're going to need. So right. the beauty of Safety Wing for you younger folk uh, is that you can get it for quite inexpensive per month. So there's really no reason in behind not having it. Uh, you can start it, stop it whenever you want to. So uh, that's one I would just highly suggest for any of those that are questioning it. Now the other area that you wanna look for is what kind of free activities are there going to be at the next destination that you get to. This is one way that we really save money on our Yeah, plenty our of hikes to go on. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't do a whole lot of uh, YouTube videos on hikes because they're probably kind of boring, <laughs> but there are plenty to be had. Mm -hmm. Get out there, look at stuff. Walking tours, yeah. most cities have walking tours. Now we've taken advantage, of, I think we've taken advantage of one, mm -hmm. and we need to do more of it because Really, they give you great information of wherever it is you're at. They're free. There's usually a tip involved, but that's okay because you've already budgeted for that tip because, you know, you added a couple hundred dollars onto what you think your trip might have cost. 
But those walking tours are kind of cool. Yeah, those are great to take advantage of. And the other thing is, is in a lot of these bigger cities where there's old monuments and things to go see or cathedrals, a yes. lot of time there will be one day per month that you can go into them for free. Uh, so that is definitely something to look into prior to coming so that you don't miss that free day. Right. And if churches are something you're into, mm -hmm. most of the time, the churches are free. They'll ask for a small donation, mm -hmm. but that's something you can do as well. Okay, avoiding paid tours mm -hmm. or not avoiding paid tours. Yeah. I think you're better off going on a paid tour. You're going to save money in the long run, we feel, mm -hmm. than renting or trying to navigate it yourself. Your time is worth something. And if you're just on vacation, you might want to consider spending the extra dollar and going on these tours. Right. This was an area that we absolutely like avoided really badly yes. in the beginning because it was expensive and we were so much trying to stay within our budget. But then as time went on and we started looking at these tours, like actually giving them the time to look at them and see what was truly involved. And a good example would be a tour that we went on when we were in Italy. And it was a t Tuscany day tour. We went to three different towns and we went to a winery and we had um, a wine tasting and we had lunch. Now that tour itself was around $80. Now from Florence where we were at, we could get to one of the towns by bus, but the other two towns were not easily accessible at all. Uh, we weren't gonna be able to get to the winery without I don't, going on a tour or right. renting a car or something like that. So for $80, it got us to two towns we weren't gonna be able to get to, and it got us to a wine tasting and having lunch. And so sometimes you really have to just kind of look at all the costs that are involved and what you're getting for right. it. And in the end, you know, I mean, you may well, pay a little bit more, but boy, it sure seems you know, worth it. Another one that, I, that came to mind right away, mm -hmm. that's a great example, an even better example, <laughs> is when we were in Thailand, we, we go to Maya Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maya Bay, we wouldn't have been able to go to any of that thing, yeah. any of that stuff, right. uh, without going on a tour. Mm -hmm. Sure, we could have rented a boat, I guess. <laughs> I think but that would have been more expensive. That would have been more expensive yeah. as well. So don't forget about the paid tours. Yeah. Take advantage of them. You can get some really great deals that in the end seem like, wow, you got all of that for that amount of money, so be sure to look into them. Not getting a SIM card or not using an eSIM, but instead keeping your plan from home. We've had people say to us that they choose to keep their plan from home. It's such a great deal. Right. You know, that great deal, which is $60, $70 a month, and then when you add on international coverage at whatever amount, I mean, my old plan was $10 a day when I right. added international. When you can hop into a town and for a really good example, we are paying $4 in Romania for our coverage for an entire month. Now, some areas we've gone to has been closer to 40, and but I would say on average, we have found maybe $15. Now with the eSIM that I'm using, I'm averaging maybe $13 a month. Yeah, no, I don't have an eSIM on my phone. It's too old, so I have to plug in the, uh, the SIM card. Mm -hmm. I have the guy do it, or the gal at the, at the booth. Mm -hmm. And they do a great job. It works every time. Super fast. And that's costing me 10, 12, 15 bucks, mm -hmm. whatever it is, at whatever location we're at. We have had people say, well, geez, I just extend my plan. If you're going on a week or two vacation, sure, you could probably get away with extending that plan and paying $100. If that's your jam, go for it. But if you're going on an extended period of time, I would not carry that US coverage and pay the extra dollar. Yeah, and if you have any questions on kind of how we manage doing that, because as soon as you right. take that SIM card out from your company that you are that you are paying a fee to, your number is now the issue, right? So we do have a video explaining how to get that number transferred over and kind of the process that we did to do that. So uh, if you're interested in that. We'll leave that link below. Okay, don't forget about cooking at home. Mm -hmm. Now when we're on vacation or you're you're doing something exciting and something new, you want to taste the food, go for it because food is a part of travel, but don't get carried away with it. We have found if you eat out two or three times a week, depending on where you're at, that's more than enough. We tend to eat in most of the time, grocery stores, the cost of living just about everywhere we've been, grocery stores are less expensive 
than eating out, except for maybe Southeast Asia. Right. That is the, that would be the one thing That'd I would say place, is that yeah. we were going to the grocery store and it's like we really just wanted a home cooked meal at this point, but you were paying easily probably three times as much to cook a home cooked meal. Right. So you kind of have to weigh it out wherever you're at. But uh, yeah, don't eat out every single night. Try and cook in yeah, a little we're bit. We're in Turkey right now. We went down to the grocery store and we were pleasantly surprised with the cost of goods. The mm -hmm. cost of goods at the market that we just went to yesterday. So inexpensive. Very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So we've been cooking at home quite a bit, and you can find just about everything you need anywhere you go that you're used to eat at home. Well, and that's a good point, is veer away from also just the grocery stores and find those farmer markets, because yeah. you really can save some money there, not only saving money, but you're getting much better produce. So. Now another area where people cut those corners is, or don't cut corners, is grabbing a taxi or an Uber instead of maybe checking out public transportation. Now public transportation in general is going to be cheaper. There are a lot of times that we have chosen, even as budget travelers, to not use that public transportation. We have decided when we arrive at a new location or we need to get to the airport, we almost always now get a taxi to get us there or get us to our Airbnb. It just makes the travel day a lot easier. But all that other transport, Transportation is not that hard to navigate. Uh, as soon as you figure it out, you're going to be really thankful that you did yeah. and you're going to save so much money. Yeah, public transportation isn't something that Carrie and I uh, were used to before we started traveling. We didn't use it back home. Um, we got on the road and it was a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. We will cover more of that in a podcast that's coming up later on. Mm -hmm. But it can be intimidating. But if you just get into it, learn it, get to that initial... Uh, I, I don't know, um, they'll try learning, them. Process, yeah, they'll learning process, then, then it becomes a lot easier. Mm -hmm. That's trains, that's subways, that's buses. Every time we have forced ourselves to get in to do that, uh, we have been pleasantly surprised yeah, and we how kinda, easy it's been. We force ourselves now, especially because we are in places typically a long period of yes. time, we force ourselves right out the gate to do it so that we just know right away how easy it's going to be because right. then we use it more. The best example of a transportation situation that we had is we had got off of the plane in Phuket and um, Brian's like, I oh, just want to take a taxi, get to the yeah. place. And yeah. I was like, nope, I researched and I found this bus now. In his defense, we typically do tell ourselves we are going to take a taxi on those travel days. But we were talking a difference of like $45 to maybe $4. Right. And so it said online it was super easy. It told exactly where to get the bus. And boy, was it easy. Yeah, she <laughs> was, was right so again. It was so great. So we ended up taking the bus. Yeah. It dropped us, uh, I think, the, the two blocks from where mm -hmm. we our hotel was going to be. Yeah. So so that that was super convenient. The other time I can think of was the subway and tram system um, in Phuket, uh, not in Phuket, but in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. um, we had never done it before. Mm -hmm. So we get there, we look at the screen, we push the buttons, we figure it out. It turned out to be super easy. They have one of the best transportation super easy, systems. And, yeah. and we were a little bit intimidated mm -hmm. going in, but we learned it's not intimidating at all. It's actually quite easy and doable. So for the next week that we were in Bangkok, we used it all the we're time. We're all over the place. Yeah, it was great. Not taking a filtered water bottle with you on your travels. Now we, you know, when we first started traveling, there were plenty of places we went to, we could just drink the tap water, probably still not the best thing to be doing uh, because some of these places it's like really old pipes. Uh, but it wasn't until we got to Southeast Asia yeah. And we really experienced, first off, how much water we were buying, because it was so freaking hot. It was hot and muggy. Yeah. So we yeah. were drinking so much water, and then we had the whole experience of seeing just the amount of plastic that not only was, it was just a horrible amount of plastic that's being thrown away, but we were contributing to that on a daily basis. Yeah. I, yeah. There, was, there was, one day we went down to the beach, there was more water bottles on the beach than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> If you ever shaken a stick, you can shake your stick at a lot of stuff, a lot of water bottles. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm never using a water bottle again. Yeah. So we did make a purchase. We did make a purchase, did a lot of research, and we found one that we knew was going to, we could just take tap water right out of the faucet and it was ready to drink. And then also if we were in a situation, say, maybe Mexico, where you feel like you need to also have the filter in that bottle, uh, we would be able to use that as well. Um, we will have the link down below for the one we picked and that, that we really like. Um, right. You know, sometimes it's nice to get something that somebody's already tried out. But uh, otherwise, we would just suggest 
save yourself some money, save plastic, and get some kind of water bottle that you can take with you. Now it's gonna cost you money up front. Mm -hmm. We're gonna track how much or how long it's gonna take us to pay for that bottle. Mm -hmm. Because we're used to buying water. We know how much it costs in Greece because we've been there. We've looked to see how much it costs in Turkey. We know how much we drink. So we're kind of adding it up as we go mm -hmm. and we'll figure out. We think it's gonna be about the four month time that yeah. we are out this time to pay for our bottles. Right. And so, you know, and then however long after that you're using them for, which it's is gonna be a long like time. It's kind of like carry on luggage. Yeah. <laughs> if you have carry on luggage and you get on that plane with that carry on luggage time and time and time again, and you're not paying to ship it home, well, you're saving money in the long run. The final mistake you really don't want to make is not keeping track of your expenses. And when I say keep track of your expenses, it's not like occasionally write down what <laughs> you spent. Um, I keep track of every single penny we spend. Uh, that goes yeah. from the quick little grocery shop stop or going to who get a cup of coffee. Uh, it doesn't matter how small those purchases are, they are entered in our expenses and those come down to all those cost of living videos that you see. Those are our cost of living down to the penny. By keeping track of all of those costs, you know exactly what your travels are costing you to yeah. do and where you need to make adjustments. Now, I, I've been there, you've been there, you know you have been. You look in your wallet or your purse and you think to yourself, Where'd all my money go? Mm -hmm. Well, you weren't keeping track of it is where it all went and you overspent. Don't let that happen to you ever again. It's happened to me many times. Mm -hmm. You go out with the boys and all of a sudden you've spent $100 on drinks and food. You can't afford to do that. So don't do it. Not keep track good. of what you're spending. Yeah. You can ruin a vacation. Yeah, and people have asked us how we keep track of everything or how I keep track of everything. I actually use an app. It's called Travel Spend. There are plenty yeah. of different apps out there that you can use. The version I use now is free. I used to do their paid one. They kind of went up in price, and I I really didn't want to spend that much money on it. So I use the paid version or the uh, free version. Right. And then what I do is at the end of each month that we have spent in a location, I just transfer all that information over all the final costs over into a spreadsheet and then I have that information for our year-end uh, budget as well. So just highly recommend doing that because you may see areas like, oh my goodness, we're spending so much money in this area, we need to cut back there. Or you may at the end of the month be like, wow, we're doing really great. We could go on that extra excursion Let's go or buy something. something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, we hope that this helped you in your planning of your travels and areas that you might be able to Save some money, but also those areas where you don't want to cut corners because it's really not worth it. Don't cut corners on your accommodations and make sure you go on those excursions. They're usually worth it. All right, we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.